Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECEO. And I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Wait. Not nothing, you know, my day, all going. Hey, man. Say, man, we down here in New Orleans, man. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel, man. Uh, man, we down here with Kings. We down here in New Orleans where culture is thick. Y'all don't understand, man, what's going on right now, man. We we just blessed to be here. This is our second time down here in New Orleans. God made the God did this. Mm -hmm. Got us here, man. Indeed. We in the Indeed. building with Conta. Man, what's going on, Conta? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Nice to meet y'all, man. All right, how y'all doing? There we go. Now we now we cooking, man. We here with Conta, man. What's you know up, what I'm saying? Man, that name, man. It, even that name. Oh, yeah. Man, I know you got a lot of black mm -hmm. from that name. But hold oh, on. Man. Is that where your mama named you indeed, from? Indeed, I got to make indeed. sure. 1977, the year the movie came out, that's the year she decided to switch my name from my pop's name to Conta. Oh, Did. so she had named you your pops first. And no, then. that was the intentions. But I was born in February of 77. The same month the movie came out. That's when she made her decision. She switched over. And you were getting teased. Like he was asking, have you ever gotten yes, teased? Yes, indeed. A lot, a lot. Did a you lot. ever go to your mama and say, Mama, why did you name no, me? I, I sat there in front of the TV every year. Every Black History Month that that and that she made come you on. watch the and movie. And she made me watch it. She would never explain it to me. She would just sit me there and let me watch it. You know what I mean? I visuals, never explained it. Never explained it to me. It, what did it, you get it, from it? It paid off in the long run. In the beginning, the same question you asked. Why, Why? would you name me? You know, something After, of that nature. Yeah. Right. Uh, I really didn't understand the film at the time. And when did you get it? Uh, maybe on my first juvenile jokes. How old were you? Movie. Well, my first juvenile jokes was probably 13. 13. Uh, and how did you get it? What happened? Why uh, you got it? Arrest for... Uh, Possession of a stolen car and mm -hmm. a pistol. I know, and then why did it, you get the fact that, okay, okay, this is why. Okay, I had a chance to actually read the book and I actually seen the, the, the trail of the book instead of the movie. Is the book got, better? Yes, it's better. I mean, I don't necessarily know if everything in the book is actually facts, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's better. It's better. It's deeper. You know what I mean? You get the contents of the religious parts of it. Oh, know, okay. The culture part. The culture part. But yes, yes. So that kind of affected me even more. I appreciate her for it. Indeed. Rest in peace to my mom. She passed. Rest in peace. Year. Okay. R.I.P. Right. 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 Yes, indeed. So you were raised by your mama and your daddy? Well, I was raised by my mom's for a while. Then my, grand, my grandmother took over. Why? What happened to your mom? Why? Oh, well, my mom's, uh, she was a hustler. She was in the streets, okay. you know I mean? Pretty good woman, but she still hustled, you know, here and there. She had to do what she got to do. Indeed, indeed. How old were you when you when your grandmother took over? Uh, at least nine, nine, ten, nine, ten years old. Only child? Mm-hmm, only child. Okay, so you're spoiled. Gra and especially when grandma indeed. raised you, yes, you know how yes, grandmothers be yes, doing. indeed. My mother was her youngest daughter out of five. So, um... Tell me something that you learned from your mom, and then also tell me something that you learned from your, your grandma that stuck with you over the years. Well, the biggest thing that I live off now is take nothing for granted, period. Take nothing for granted, you know what I mean? It's, I was raised pretty, you know, in a pretty fair situation until, you know, certain things started to happen in my family with my mom hustling. Mm -hmm. So uh, that kind of sent me through a little tizzy where I was all... Uh, I would say I was off my rocker, you know. I'm going you were to, like you wanted your mama there all yeah, the time indeed, and stuff indeed, like that. Cause yes, you, you're a mama's so boy. So used to moms, yeah. My grandmother, she was awesome, but you know that was nobody. Not like your mom. Around. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, with that being said, that's why I kind of went to running off the path, you know, the path that I was on, because you know, I was pretty focused as a kid when I was with my moms. Well, where was your dad during all of this? Oh, uh, in and out of prison, you know. You know, he probably either been in and out of prison or either he was just. Landlord, we had good communication, you know, but uh, he wasn't with mom, so I wouldn't fully accept him. Mm, he so. couldn't tell you nothing. Like, you're not right here. Yeah. You can't discipline me. You can't yeah. do nothing. Well, yeah. Because even I when. I respected him highly, though. You respected him highly. Yes, indeed. Because you know how it's so funny, because I know a lot of men who sit at that seat and they love their mom. It's always a mom who always end up being the person who's taking care of them. Daddy somewhere around. But it's always the mom who's taking care of them. Mm -hmm. But there's always a point in time somewhere in their life where the son is too much to handle because, you know, a man is a, a boy becomes a man and he's like, I can't deal with you. You know, you try, we arguing, I just can't handle you. Yes. They always try to call daddy to deal with the son. Mm -hmm. But 
as much as you love mom and you respect mom, y'all still get into it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's the thing, like me being a mom, I'm like, you want, you only mean the best for your kids. You want your kids to do right. Mm -hmm. You try to raise them as best as you can, but you can't be there all the time. You can't hold them. I always tell my kids, life gonna teach you stuff that I can't. Indeed. You know what I mean? Because no matter how much you tell them, tell them, tell them, as a child, I know that it's a lot of things that you did, just like you say, you didn't get till you got older. Mm-hmm. And what I realize about that as a parent, it's our job to tell you, to constantly tell you, don't worry if you, you gonna do it, mm-hmm. but just tell you instead, because when God is ready, your ears will be open to receive it. That's- you understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when we love somebody, we want you to do it right then and there. Indeed. Cause we, we know that it's good for you. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to just Sometimes decide. it doesn't work out that way. No, no. You know? mm. So what did your, your grandma tell you, tell well, you that helped you? Well, my grandmother, she like I said, she was a beautiful woman. Uh, she kept me well, you know what I'm saying? She was a uh, backbone of the family. Um, she passed as well. But uh, Graham's like, you know, she just, she just, you know, always was there for me, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, always took care of me nice, you know, took care of the things I needed handled in my life. Mentally, she was... Good for my condition, my conditioning and my healing mentally, cause mm-hmm. I really wanted to be with my mom, you know. But uh, the streets still took over. The streets took over at some point. See, the reason why I love to ask all these questions because a lot of times when people do crime or do certain things, we, you know, people get mad at a person for doing these things, but don't realize that trauma in their past is what caused them to do certain things and exactly. lead them up to where mm-hmm. they're at. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because um, we had little Snoop Mom who came on the show, and she was they had a little program that they that they went through where because her son got killed, Mm -hmm. and they had a program where they brought all the moms who lost their sons into a room, and they faced people not the murderer of their son or Mm -hmm. their their kids, but people who actually killed people, Mm -hmm. and uh, you know reform came out. And they talked about their childhood where some of them was either sexually abused or went yeah. through different things. And that's what caused them to be on this path. So mm-hmm. the moms tend to end up having empathy Indeed. for, you know, although their their kids were lost because of, you know, crazy, but you happened. really don't know what that person was, was going, going through. through. Exactly. Why they become the person who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I like to go back into your history to see what you had to go okay. through. Well, in that in that aspect, I would say, well, I just recently found out before I was released from Angola that I was diagnosed with uh, anxiety issues. But, I mean, I really didn't realize that I've been having that since a kid. You know mm. what I'm saying? I never knew that. That's why when I kind of, like, go off, I can't calm down. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, literally blackout. And I couldn't calm down, couldn't calm down, couldn't calm down. But I just realized that. As you know, my on my way out. Wow. You know, I'm then I got diagnosed with anxiety attack. That's what that is, because I hear some people say, I get so mad that I black out and yeah. I don't I don't yeah. I can't tell you what just happened. Well, so is that what that is? Well, I've never been to the point where I couldn't tell you exactly what took place, mm-hmm. but I know I can't calm down. You can't calm, calm down. down. And yeah. that's anxiety. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yes, yes. And I think that's caused by a lot of black families don't take their kids to Especially um, doctors. I'm not talking just exactly. physical doctors, yes. but yes. when they think mental, about mental, yes. because a I'm lot sure. of parents feel like you're not gonna label my child no, crazy. Exactly. exactly. Especially exactly. in school. Exactly. You know what I mean? They don't want a label come over their kids, but they're not realizing that if it's a constant thing that's happening, yes. you can hindrance. get yes. right, yes. and you can get your child, you know, help, mm-hmm. whether counseling or um, medicine or anything like that. Do you have to be in medicine now, or are you no. just? No, well, I refused to take any type of uh, psych meds while I was mm-hmm. locked up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just them putting me on top and me kind of, you know, just channeling my focus when I'm in a situation or certain situations that I know I can't handle. You know, I just shy away from them. I pull myself back from them because I know the more I entertain it, you know, I'm going to take it somewhere. It's awareness is the first thing. Indeed. Is knowing what you have mm-hmm. and then moving on from there. And, in, you know, I, it, the day and age that we're in now, you can find out anything on social media or on YouTube. So you can always find out calming situations, how to. Mm-hmm. So that yes, can be your yes, doctor, yes, right? Yes, there's rem, yes, there yes. there are herbal remedies that mm-hmm. you can take. Yes, People drink teas yes, to calm yourself. themselves, themselves do down, all the time. All you know, the time. stuff like that. Yes. But so tell me about a time 
Because I know you, the first time you got in trouble, how old were you? Well, really, I was the, the first time I got in trouble. Well, my first juvenile, Joe, I was 13. 13? 13, yeah. But uh, I had a couple of. And what like, happened like, uh, at 13? Uh, possession of a stolen vehicle and a uh, pistol. Pistol mm -hmm. inside, just basically John riding. You know, okay. John riding, uh, got Did you finish high school? Of, no, no, no. I was a. Uh, a time I was released from Scotland, a juvenile jail. I was. I mean, it wasn't too long before I was right back in on this adult charge for something that uh, I had no idea. And how old were you when you went in for this adult charge? 17. 17. And tell me what happened. Uh, literally, we was in an altercation in my neighborhood, which is the Ironfield Housing Project. We had an altercation in that neighborhood at our DJ with some um, neighborhood friends or whatever. And um, during the, uh, while this was taking place, Something else was taking place in the Desire Housing Project, which is like five and a half miles away from our housing project. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I can't necessarily explain to you what took place in the Desire, but a life was taken. Okay, mm -hmm. in that situation, the life that was taken, they give it the uh, charge to me and my two co-defendants. Wow. Mm. Saying that we committed the crime and all. Uh, but you weren't there. At all. In fact, we was on the back of a cop car. We, uh, thank God we got stopped in the traffic stop. Right. During the um, proceedings of this murder, if it wasn't for the proceedings of this murder, uh, I mean, us being in a traffic stop during the proceedings of this murder, I probably wouldn't be talking to y'all today. Yeah, right. because then uh, if it was, it's a law enforcement officer who was there, so they can't say he's lying to help you. Right. If it was a friend, it'd be like, well, he lying. He, you know how they be doing. Well, we did have an officer that all uh, actually made the traffic stop. He literally told him that our traffic stop was in, intentionally a traffic stop. Oh. And it didn't have anything to do with a murder. Okay. But they had officers in the 5th District that were saying that we was actually assailants involved in a crime five and a half miles away. And the time, okay, so what time did the stop happen and what time did that crime happen? Okay, well, the crime happened at nine, like, exactly like 922. That was when the first calls came in about the crime, shots being fired. Okay, uh... And then your stop happened at what time? No later than 9, 927, 930. We was in a traffic stop. Yeah, you and couldn't make stopped. it that far and that and miles, yeah, in and that yes. short of a time. Okay, uh, our name was being, uh, well, one of my co defendants name was being broadcast over the radio while we was in the traffic stop. And they were saying that we was fleeing from a scene in the desired housing project headed towards the interstate. So was it somebody that looked like y'all, that they saw that they no, thought it was y'all? No, 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 no. This was- uh, Cause I'm like, why not, did they, where did they get y'all's name from? No, that's, this was not a mistaken identity. This wasn't, this was- this, But this who told them the name? It was the cops. They just came up with y'all names. Cops literally give the names up to the actual victim who was in the car. Uh. And he actually mentioned our names to them. Um, they have documents, this is public records. Do you know which police officer um, told him this name? Uh, Lynn Davis. Did he have something against y'all? Um, that's the part that I'm confused about. If yeah, because I'm like, if he had I your mean, name on the tip I of his tongue like that. that. You know, yes, yes, so um, if it was, it was through something that was happening in the streets. Did you know him no, personally? Not at all. Did you ever not have any run-in with him before? Not at all. Not with him personally, not not that I could recall. I done had a few run-ins with cops, but uh, not that I could recall, actually. Or your personally. or your friend. Did your friend have any run-ins with him? Not that we can recall. Okay. Though. Yes. Uh, by him working in the 5th District, when we are the 1st district, first district, we don't too much encounter 5th District cops. Mm -hmm. So for that situation to go like that, I mean, I don't know how it played out or how the narrative was drawn up. Yeah. But he was Because that's just crazy that yes. he just came up with, you know, y'all's name, picked y'all name, knew your names mm -hmm. to say. Yes. So uh, were there witnesses at yeah. that location? The thing about this is that the feds had the whole thing tapped. Okay. The whole time. This was. Where the shooting was. Yeah, the whole okay. thing, everything. It was under federal investigation for Operation Shadow Shield, which they was investigating a lot of crooked cops mm -hmm. that was working under the branch of uh, Lynn Davis or whatnot. And um, they actually had everything on record. They actually knew that we didn't commit the crime. But, but that had film, stuff. footage, I I or just I, don't, I really don't know voice. if they had footage, footage, but I know they had audio for sure. Okay. I know they had audio or 
and maybe a few things from their cell phones because this is how they used to communicate. Right. The phones was given to them by the feds, and they, they literally didn't know that they had phones from the feds at the time. Mm. So this is how the, a lot of the information was being tapped. Wow. Okay. So <clears throat> this was highly publicized. Mm -hmm. uh, Soldier Slim mentions it in a song. Uh, it mentioned you guys in a song. Mm -hmm. How does uh, where what time period was this? Well, Soldier Slim. Uh, I ran into Soldier Slim probably maybe around '96. Uh, he was incarcerated with me in Orleans Parish. We was incarcerated for this charge in '94. So we actually come through on the charge while we was on the tier already. Wow. So, so uh, how was he? Just, uh, just dealing with him. Oh, slim, 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 straight, bro. You know what I mean? I know a lot of people say this, that, not all. You know the street gangster shit. He's a good dude, bro. Literally, he's a good guy. Just, just firm, bro. He's gonna stand firm on what he believe in, you know. So, uh, and anyway, we was pretty good people, you know. We fuck around with each other. Tell yeah. me something that he did that, because, you know, a lot of people say he was good, but I love to hear a story of something that he did that uh, you know that about. Stuck out. That stuck out. Well, well, what stuck out, me and him had a weird encounter for those that was in the Paris, they could vouch for it or whatnot. Uh, when he come on the tier, he didn't want to do any rapping because he's not a, like, rapper, rapper for just to be rapping. Yeah. But me, being from downtown, I wanted to hear something, you know, because <laughs> I had to purchase music from him before. You know, I was incarcerated. I done bought some of his albums and shit. So, you know, I wasn't feeling him not rapping. You know what you mean? You're not rapping. And you're older than he is. Well, yeah, so I'm around the same age. Around the same age, okay. Yeah, so uh, I wasn't feeling that. So I'm like, you know, somebody get this nigga some beats or some shit. You, know, you, know, <laughs> you gonna rap. rap in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God bless the day, but you know, real shit. You know, you're going to rap, but you're going to run something, nigga. I done spent, you know, and shit. On right. Yeah, I'm a fan. I rock, I rock with, with you. Shit. Yeah, you know. So he kind of respected the approach. It wasn't like he cowered out and did right. shit. You know, he respected the nigga come at him like that, you know. So he got out. From that point on, he got out. He really? The yeah, he rocked the tier. So he rocked the tier. Yeah, that's what he do. Because you guys locked up. Like, this is a freedom. This is a sense yeah, of this freedom. Is shit. Yeah, this yeah. is our shit, man. Yeah. You know, don't come in here and be caged. And, and, you know, act act like we can't, yeah, like we can't yeah, just be that's, free that's, in here the yes. same way in the world. Yes, then he was that nigga. He was the artist at the time, you know? So I how, definitely need to hear that. How was he? Because you know how a lot of time when we listen to somebody on the records, they sound one way, but when you hear them in person, they sound a different way. No, that's slim. That's slim. He sounded the same way, that's both slim. ways. His language, when he talk, when he rap, it's all slim. Slim, his shit don't change. Don't change. His shit don't change. So when he when he rapped uh, during that time, was this before? Then after he came home, that's when he put y'all name in that song. Yeah, well, he had a little incident. Well, I don't necessarily, necessarily think my name would have made the song or my co-defendants would have made the song due to the fact we from downtown. Slim is an uptown nigga. Magnolia. Yeah, all the way through. All the way through. He's an uptown, you can respect real niggas, but you know he's all about his uptown thing. You know, he's not the one to just really be boasting about dudes from downtown. Yeah. But, uh, him and a uh, guy in my neighborhood, which I'm real close to, is crazy. Which okay. One of the 504 boys, uh, they had their little encounter. So with them having their encounter and me and him have already had met each other and him living on the till with me, you know, he just had to fix that in a manner where, you know, okay, I'm on with your project, bro, but at the same time, I know the real ones out there, you know, just that, the third. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, you know, crazy not no chump either. He just, he's a brain. Yeah. He not a move, bro. He's smart. He's a brain. So he just stay clear of the shit, bro. You know, he not a stat away. He not an idiot. You know, so uh, he was smart enough not to take that walk. Wow, just a hey, sp special shout out to my daughter who just sent me uh, her her straight A's uh, and she 95 to 100. Man. All day. And uh, she in the 12th grade and uh, she won her $300. I told Beautiful. her any, <laughs> anything, anything that she go up over 95 in a subject. She get an extra, extra hundred dollars. So she just hit me up. We about to send her that three hundred. She, she said, "She said, send me that three hundred now. <laughs> send her that three hundred. <laughs> send it to her, please. Anything less than that would be uncivilized. Yeah, send her the three. I'm <laughs> like, dang. She said grades are in. She was, she couldn't wait on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. send her the three hundred. Go and give her money. Uh, Indeed. she deserve it. Congratulations. That's hard, that's man. Congratulations. Yeah. Man. That's <laughs> Sorry about that. All the time, man. Kids <laughs> first, man. Yeah, yeah, that's man. Something. So go, going back into the story, but by Soldier Slim, like. Yeah. When you think about how the city embraced him after mm -hmm. all of this, 
Um, they should. You seen that coming? They should. Yes, yes. He's the one, man. He was the one. I mean, if you you needed the culture of the city, there's nobody that could really just rap the whole culture of the city, the mentality of the city, and rap with Slim at that time. What? You know. When you think about Slim, that day when you you heard about when he got killed in front of his home, uh, mm-hmm. where were you? You were locked up, of course, mm-hmm. during that time. But what what ran across your mind? That was heartbreaking, bro. That was heartbreaking. But you can almost see it. You know what I'm saying? The way Slim lived. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you don't wish that on him. But you know, I mean, he was kind of erratic. And during that time, bro, you know what I'm saying? The city really didn't respect rappers like that. So Slim was the only one that kind of navigated through that shit, being a street nigga and a rapper at the same time. The rest of the rappers, we uh, would just look at them as How could rappers. you say that the city didn't inspect rappers when you had Birdman from down here? I'm, I'm just a, giving you the questions. I'm about to give you had Birdman from down here. Plan. You had Master P. You had yes, No yes, Limit. Yes, 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 you yes, had yes. all these guys yes, down yes. here. How could you say that the city didn't respect them when they had uplifted them? Okay, well, if you notice, when Birdman first come out during his mostly all his raps, he consistently tell you that I ain't a rapper. Well, yeah. I'm a gangster. Yeah. He, he did not want the rapper stigma. He don't want to rap a stigma. He want to rap a money, but he don't want to rap a stigma. That's that rapper, you know, I mean, generations as it's gone along, I mean, we embrace it now, but during those times, no, rappers was characters. Rappers were characters. Slim was one of the ones that made the exception around that time, yeah. Wow, so when you, cause being that you were, you you know that era when Birdman and them first came out with uh, Cash Money, and I'm gonna ask you about mm-hmm. P two, but you was out, you was in the streets, right? Oh, yes, yes, I was. What what was something that stick out about that era for you when when Birdman and them came with? Cause I know you hear the fact that he a gangster. Y'all down here, y'all live. Mm-hmm. He he actually from where is he from? He from he's from uptown. Uptown. He's from uptown. You, he he is uptown. Just put it that way. You can move across the board uptown. Okay, so. Yes. When you see him and that whole movement, what does that, how does that hit you? You like awesome. proud of him? It's beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful, man. You know, only thing I don't like is not seeing him and P, P hook up. They never did that's hook the, up, did they? about the, you know, I mean, I understand the situation, the street situation. You know, I don't want to go into details of that with the two neighborhoods. But, man, that 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 would be so uplifting. That would have been a for big, the city. That's right. For, even right now, even with right now, today. If Just they came them, together, them guys to see. Them if Calio guys. came together with Uptown, is what yeah. you're saying. You no, know, if they could see Master P and Baby and together. And Baby together. Do you Which think is Calio and Uptown, yeah. right? Well, it's Calio and Magnolia. Magnolia, Magnolia. Yeah. yeah. But do you think that there might ever be a time that they can put their differences aside to just do it for the city, to bring the city together? Well, me knowing the mentality of guys from New Orleans. It's a hard rock. That's a hard rock because, I mean, it's a lot of lives lost and a lot of things went on between, you know, different projects that, you know, wouldn't allow them to to really just sit down and overlook all that shit. So, you know. But it would be a healing because, you know, even like yes. I got to put it, yes. I got to put it right back to the Mo 3 Yellow Beasy from Dallas. Mm-hmm. You know, we we can't say the fact of the matter is. Master P's still here and Baby's still here. They're that's both still the, living. The the you thing. know, so I can't really just always go back and talk about Yellow Beezy and Moti Kamo 3's gone. Mm-hmm. But I so wish that they could have put their differences aside mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. had came together yes. just to do it for the city. You indeed. know what I mean? Because yes. it would have it would have stopped a lot of foolishness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes, but, but, but when you look at uh, Master P and when you look at Birdman, they... KL came on the show, KLC, and he was telling me that he had them and Soldier Slim in his place rapping to body body, freestyling to it. Mm-hmm. So there was a time when they could the be in the same the room and embrace each other as mm-hmm. before the fame took off. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, this is something that's, he that's, spoke of on my show. Mm-hmm. So that right there tells me that that before the, you know, some Sean Cotton said, shout out, say cheese, Sean Cotton, he said, you never know nobody till they get money. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Is that true? Well, I mean, it's. I mean, I can't speak for those guys. In not not just just them, yeah, but people in general. Yes, yeah, because yes, because that general. that changes a lot. And I mean, in New Orleans, definitely, bro, because it's it's rough down there. Real talk. I mean, there's not money at all on that that level. You know what I'm saying? So for them to win like that, to win that big, I mean, you know. You would have to distance yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, motherfuckers just say, well, excuse my language, they would uh, 
say peace, uh, baby, or whatnot, scary leader, state, or whatever they can't, you know. It's about the smartest thing they could ever did was lead the state. I mean, this state just tore up, man, for real. If they could put me in prison at 17 years old for a person I've never seen in my life, if you could do that to a kid, three kids, I mean, what, what's the chance of Abe and, you know, Stunner or uh, Pete Lassen with all that money in this state? What? Where were you locked up at again, Phil? Angola, Orleans, Paris, Hunts. So you was locked up with Mac? Yeah, well, I went through Hunts. Mac was on a, on the other side when I went through Hunts. Okay, so you never did time. I never just, ran into him. You never yeah. ran into him, but y'all were on the same unit mm-hmm. at that time. Mm-hmm. And 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 because he's another case that I look at down here. I I look at the way you guys go through this system, and I never hear good things about this system. I, I, that's why when I come through here, mm-hmm. I come through here. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. And I'm coming up out of here yes. because it's just like you never hear good things about what it is to deal with that system, that judicial system, mm-hmm. compared to the stories I hear just with the young man that was just on here. It's just crazy that you just, you, you is justice ever really served down here? No, not that I know of, not that I know of. Not even in my situation with me just coming home, you know what I mean? Uh, I appreciate the fact that um, judge and uh, head district attorney, my judge, um, found it in the heart to, uh, Overlooked everything that the material that was before, and um, rendered the decision mm-hmm. she came with. But uh, at the same time, man, it just threw me back out here. I mean, after 28 and a half years, you know, I'm back out in the streets. The city is the murder capital again. Like I said, when I went in, it was the murder capital. Mm-hmm. Now I'm back out here, and uh, the little programs they have to try to help fund individuals, you know, is better than it was. But actually, bro, there's really no, you know. No assistance for us, bro. You just tossed me out in this world, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I gotta fend for myself. I gotta fetch for. I mean, I gotta feed myself. You know what I'm saying? Like transportation, things of that nature. I mean, and uh, I don't see no compensation for it. I don't see where they're gonna uh, where they're gonna find the actual bag to compensate us for it. Bro. I mean, they got several guys that came out before me that won legal suits, lawsuits, and things, and they still haven't received any money. So this shit is consistently being, you know, you got, man, within the last five, six years, you probably had like 20-something guys come home that were falsely accused. How uh, did you pay? Yeah, I just, man, I don't, I don't like hearing the stories, but I love seeing you home. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? The, you look like me, part. so yes. I love seeing you home. I, 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 because some people die in that place. Indeed. You was, you was laying beside people that never coming home. Indeed, indeed. You know, uh, I watched uh, a lot of them die. Who's too. the who's the most person that you seen that you ever talked to that had the most time when you was down there? Like, dang, you got three life sentences. Oh uh, well, one of my uh, partners, uh, Wine, Wine had five life sentences. Five life sentences. Five life sentences. He had two. How was two, Wine? Two uh, death penalties and five life sentences. You know, um, he just got come off that road. You know what I'm saying? He hoped that was overturned. He come off that road, but he's still sitting with five life sentences. So how was the conversation? How was his temperature when you would talk to him? Shit, man. Real I mean, humble or? Man, I mean, real talk. I mean, but it's for like damn near everybody that went in Angola. Due to the laws, I mean, when you get a natural life sentence in Angola, that's what they meant, literally. This shit just start, you know, coming around with certain people getting a little play, but man, shit. You talking about guys laying next to you 50 years on the books, 40 years on the books. I'm talking about literally ain't going nowhere. Ain't got no chance of going home or nothing. Wow. So that's, that's crazy. And me going in at the age I went in. 17. 17, yes. Yes, it was harsh. And well, how old was you when you got out? Ooh, 45. 17 to 45. Yeah, for a guy i never seen in my life. For a guy you never yes. seen in your life. And if his mother is watching this, if his sister is watching this, once again, I'm sorry for y'all loss. Like I said, I've never seen your kid in my life, and the case now proves that. Wow. Uh, so, for a case like that, when you would come up for parole, or well, you know, when, when you would come up, say they thought when you was about to get out, or if it was any chance of you getting out, were they campaigning against you? There was no parole. Only reason I got lucky and had parole eligibility because I was a juvenile. Due to me being a juvenile, I had um, parole eligibility came around in like 20, 2018 for me, you know, so all uh, with that being said, I didn't want to uh, go on a parole board because I understood my lawyer explained to me that I would have to, you know, yes, you're going to have to admit guilt. Man, that's no way in the world. Mm. That's no way in the world. Not even to go home. 
and I'm knowing I've been down for a while. That's that what you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Yes. but you know how many people do that Not just that. because yes, they want to go home about, to see their kids? Yes, I don't watch the Did you have kids? Time. Man, yes, I have one daughter. Yes. Um, Before yes. you yes. went in? Yes, she was three months when I went to, when I got incarcerated, yes. How did that feel being Man, away the from that's her? That's the worst. That's the worst. You know, did I she come stand. visit? Yeah, I did. Yeah, she did. Regular, regular, regular until she went into the service. You know, she went to Houston College. Right now, she's still out there in Houston. I just come from out there in Siena, so... You know, I had my first grand grandkid. Grandkid. I yeah. seen it on the on your yeah, page. Yes, yes, yes. My little guy, bro. So, uh, wow. Congrats, yeah, man. Yeah, I appreciate That's, that. Because one thing I always would say, um, it's hard, it's hard for um, person to um, raise their child from behind prison doors because mm -hmm. it's like I heard some people say, you know, you can try to tell them, but when they're out here, they're going to do what they want to do anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, but a yeah. girl is different, though. Girls are different than mm -hmm. boys, though. Girls are a little bit easier to me. Yeah, well, uh, well, men, you know, just feel the need to have their own independence. That's just in, in us, you know, not saying women not, you know. But men just like to be out on their own and be responsible, you know. And so at certain ages, you really got to lock in on them. You got to mm -hmm. see where they're mental at, you know what I'm saying. Give them space, but at the same time, you got to be real strict about, you know, kids, man, because... Uh, Tell they take anything for granted, bro. It could definitely happen to True. them. True. Tell me about your relationship with Boss B. Oh, Boss B, man. That's that. Like I say, I always say this year about this guy, bro. You know, he's one of the smoothest guys I ever met. Next to this guy here, bro. You know what I'm saying? But uh, he's one of the smoothest guys I ever met, bro. He's real laid back. He's he's loyal, bro. If he boss fuck with you, he fuck with you. You know, boss. Is that's hard the, to find. Yes, he's not the chatterbox type. He's not, you know. Off, run off at the mouth too much. I mean, straight with the guys he deal with, he's he's 100 with it. Mm -hmm. Wow, I gotta ask you about uh, gangster Terrence Williams. Mm -hmm. He out here on the internet, man, and he, hey, hey, everybody see what's going on. Uh, Boosie mm -hmm. had some real harsh words to say about telling on somebody who mm -hmm. you know yeah, the I dead. Catch that. I and catch and that. I'm I'm just trying to understand. You were locked up with this guy. Mm -hmm. Well, both of them. With Boosie as well? Yeah, Boosie so was in he's, Angola when I was up. He said Boosie was in protective custody when mm -hmm. he was in Angola. Is that true? Well, I heard that, man. The guy was, the guy, the situation that Boosie was in, from my understanding. He was in the camp with me at one time. Boosie had money when he come to jail. Simple as that. He had money when he come to jail. I mean, and all uh, the little situation with Angola by our population and the way the prison is being ran, it's open, it's wide open. It's not a lockdown prison. So I'm talking about it's very wide open. It's not like any other prison on the inside. So it's a lot of movement, a lot of movement. So um, with his money, they knew he could have kind of dictated a lot of shit in the prison. So um, they held him in the cells for a while. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So he went through everything he had to, to get out the cells. I know this for a fact. He was literally trying to come in population. He made it out, but they sent him to a camp that wasn't really known for, you know, it was like, you know, close to a trustee camp. It wasn't no population. I mean, it was population, but it wasn't no uh, PC or no shit like that. Yeah, he came out. He came out. He came wow. Out. So, so you, how was the temperature when he was there? People just knew. He uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like I said, bro. Uh, and Angola, this is not to take no credit for them guys, you know what I'm saying? But rappers don't, they don't actually move pieces in Angola like that, you know what I'm saying? In Angola, man, you really got to put your work in to be respected in that. You're not you just come to jail and because you, you know, and you take over shit. No, it didn't work like that, you know what I'm saying? So they were good. you're a pretty good guy. Wow. I just, I, I look at, you know, when he was locked up and then he went into a, I think he went in for a, uh, uh, 18 month stint, I want to say. It's been a while, but then he ended up had kids. They charged him for murder while he was doing this time. Mm -hmm. And then they, they start, you know, they tried him for murder. Start billing cases. They start yeah. billing cases yeah. on him. You thought he was just going for uh, this period of time and then coming home, but it ended up being something where they tried to shift it. Mm -hmm. And then he, he winds up on death row. Mm -hmm. And that's at Angola. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where, and you were there during that time. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. crazy. And Terrence was there during that time. No, well, gangster. I was in Paris with gangster. Okay, so yeah, he wasn't there. He wasn't even there during I went that to time. Gangsta. Gangsta didn't come to Angola. 
Gangsta never been an angle. So how do he know what kind of time Boosie was in and what what type of temperature he was on? Well, I mean, because of his, you know, his street ties, you know. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of guys that he dealt with on the inside. I'm um, a guy that, you know, I used to deal with him heavy too, you know. So uh, it's easy for him to find out find certain out. things at that point, you know what I mean? Right now, I don't know if the guy's actually, you know, putting him in people business like that right now. But uh, at that time, bro, you know, he, he knew. definitely knew a lot of guys inside of prison. But with, with the way that he came home, I mean, because we just talked about how you would do certain things mm -hmm. to, 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 to jeopardize who you are. Indeed. But he comes home on a stint where he had spoke on some people, but they just happened to be dead. Mm -hmm. How, I mean, is this something that you would, you, is this something you would have done? No, 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 no. I, I actually had a situation like that with this case, with my case. You know, not to uh, take any, uh, throw any jabs at him, you know what I'm saying? But at uh, the same time, that's not something I would have done, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not the way it go, man. They got other people, families who got to put up with that hurt, that, that, yeah. that shame that you draw on their family. You know what I'm saying? Now, if certain guys in the game, bro, they put so much work in the game, you know, where they over, I'm talking about they maxed out in the game, bro. You know what I mean? Some some guys catch that flag, bro, because, you know, people look at them as uh, scumbags, even though they're somebody's kids or whatnot. Motherfuckers will throw charges on them. You know, they did, so they'll throw it on them. It won't look any different from all the other charges he had. Mm. So um, and, and that was his case. Okay. Yeah, and I get it because I just say you know with you being locked up with him and seeing it just a close, it's a, it hits home. You know what that's, I mean? Where where you definitely was seeing things happen and you seen he was released before you. Who oh, gangster? Yes, he was. He yes, was. Yes, yes. yes. And and you remember when he came home? Yes, yes. What, was it a thing where people were talking about the yes, way he came yes, home? Yes, yes, yes. Is that some because he? Could he have not just said nothing about it and it would have been cool or they were going to find out? Man, well, either way it go, man. I mean, Gangsta, know the, he know the streets, period. He know the streets through and through. His decision was his decision. And I mean, hey, man, Gangsta, like, um, Gangsta don't give a fuck. He really don't. He don't. I mean, it fucks with him a little bit because I can imagine that he loved the reputation he had. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he said he made his transition. That he's not in the street any longer. I would hope that's the fact. You know, I would hope that's a fact. You know that he's not in the street any longer. But uh, ain't gonna give a fuck. What nobody say about him. Wow. Yo, he been like that since a kid. We did juvenile Joseph together in Scotland and everything. So I've been on him. You know what I'm saying? That shit don't mean nothing to him. He loved the entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's his shit. He loved it. He that's loved his, it. That's his shit. He, that's his he shit. Been, and that's something. I'm. I, I just look at how, how you know, like you. The way you done it, it wasn't right the way you got, you know, mm -hmm. done. You know that, mm -hmm. you know. But to hold it down and just stay true to who you are, mm -hmm. I think it says a lot about your character. Yes, yes, That's yes, real. Yes, that's yes, 100. Yes. That's all yes. I can say. That meant something to me. Yeah, it means something. to the streets, excuse me, but, you know, <laughs> yes. It meant something to me, you know. When yeah. It's about me, bro, you know what I mean? Conscious, very conscious of the things I do, bro, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Did you know Sterling? Well, I knew him, but not personally. I know okay. him from seeing him. Wow, you yes. know, yeah, I know if they, I know if they whole little crew. I was on the streets when they was moving around, you know. So I knew all of them, you know. Yeah. Stone, I was locked up with him. Scotland, all us was locked up together. I always hear about Master Pete, brother. <coughs> I never hear stories. So Kevin Miller, back when he was, you know, when they were young, I never heard. I, I guess it was before they time. Yeah. They had to be very young because mm -hmm. when I heard him rap about him, even when we were, when I was listening to Pete early mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. cause Pete really was for me the first one that came. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Out from these parts, but yeah. he was in L.A. Oh, like, yeah. uh, and, uh, he was in California. And it was like a big deal for me when I heard Ice Cream Man and all that. His run was ridiculous. Yes, indeed. And, and, and that hustle is undeniable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and he changed a lot of people's lives. Yes, yeah. And, yes, and yeah. I think about it because a lot of people talk about the Birdman's and the Masterpiece. And I have to say, all the people that were connected to them had, had great runs and great lives, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter how you look at it. Yeah, no matter how you cut the slice. They yeah. Ate, they you can't, they yeah, ate, didn't they? They ate. They so, from so where they come from, I, they ate. I love it, uh, and, and 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 Kevin Miller was was with the Tuesday Crew. Okay, I didn't know that, but at the end of the day, I, I just I, I always think about 
how the music moved down there. I always loved Louisiana, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I ain't gonna lie. I say it all the time, mm-hmm. though. People from Louisiana, anything to do with Louisiana, I just, I love it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was yeah. born five miles from Louisiana. I could have been almost over here. I grew up coming over that state line, though. All the time. <laughs> uh, the, uh, Jay Murray, uh, yeah, I'm supporting that guy. Yeah, okay. I'm supporting, yeah, I'm supporting Shorty. Shorty Fresh out the pen with me. You know what I'm saying? He was in the pen with me. I, that's one of the young boys, bro, you know. I kind of took a liking to when he was out like there, bro, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely want to see him win, bro, you know. He been working on his craft. He deserved, you know, he deserved his run. He going to get it. He going to get it? Oh, he going to get it. Man. He going to get it. When I sat in on him, you know, his manager finished doing what he got to do. But They working. He got, he got to represent the people in the box. Bro. Wow, so, man. How can people get a hold to you or how can people... Uh, link with you, you know, people just want to even donate, even rock with you. You probably have a cash out. Yes. Mm-hmm. You probably have that cash out, yes. everything, because yes. we need yes. to start moving on helping our people, man. Indeed, man. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Oh, right now, I'm really about to take down everything I have up. Wow. And I have to relay everything back on them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I have a uh, reason being is when I was in a pen, you know, I had a few situations dealing with my charge. Well, I used to have to speak to certain guys subliminal. Wow. You know, uh, over Instagram. So, I, you know what I mean, dealing with my charges because I knew what was going on. So I had to reach out to certain people to make certain things work, bro. You know what I'm saying? And um, this shit was crazy, bro. So um, with that being said, a lot of things I had to say on there, I had to take down on the page because one of the officers had come to the prison. He, well, he was fired from the force. Len mm-hmm. Davis called the He was fired from the force. He come to the prison, and he was kind of trying to see if he could, like, maybe put some pressure on me in the prison. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But Why? Guys wouldn't fuck with me behind a cop, period. Mm. That wasn't going to happen. You know what I'm right. saying? They not, you know, he ain't going against me with too many other kind of niggas either, but a cop definitely. They wasn't messing with that. So um, just to let him know that I was still in the midst of doing what I'm doing, you know, I got me. Go to move or whatever mm-hmm. you trying to do. Mm-hmm. I had to sit my set my page up and have certain shit on it to let him know that I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, uh, right now that page might link you to some shit that you're in. So I don't want people to get that. I no. want you to know. So I'm in the midst of pulling all them pages down. Anything um, that we can do to help. Yes, sir. Yes, if sir. you need me for anything, any shout outs, yes, we here for you. That's for that's the, we here. We family, and I'm gonna follow you here in a minute too. Indeed. And you gonna follow me, and we are gonna be able to link. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much, Kunta. Appreciate you, man. My Thank guy, you. my new friend. See you again. Oh, you better believe it. Now, hey, when I come Most to town, every time, or if you come to Dallas, mm-hmm. if you ever up that way, but if I come down here, yeah. I'm getting another interview. All if you if you have me, <laughs> next one, man. Oh shit, we gonna keep going. Yes, and so. Next, we gonna have victory tour. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. We finna have a little money Let like keep playing with us Oh uh, Before we leave <laughs> I would like to share this here man. Go ahead brother Stay focused on your kids Man Real talk man Real shit man You really got to stay focused I'm gonna say this Every chance I get bro Because you know man They took my mom's You know And my co-defendants We was kids bro They took my mom's Only child bro For a long wow. fucking time For a long ride bro And I didn't make it out here To see my mom Before she passed wow. bro And you know what I mean I'm just out here right now, bro. You know, I'm still soaking it all in, but I'm just out here. And, bro, I mean, that conversation shit is ridiculous. So I'm definitely going to be talking, but you know what I'm saying? So, uh, Thank you so much. Nice meet y'all. Man, nice hey, see. man. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we Stay out. Right.